Andrew Yang, along with a group of former Democratic and Republican officials are doing what literally no one asked for. They're forming a third political party dedicated to centrism, to centrism and unity. Now, let me give you the details. The new party called Forward will initially be co-chaired by the former Democratic presidential candidate, Andrew Yang, and Christine Todd Whitman, the former Republican governor of New Jersey. They hope the party will become a viable alternative to the Republican and Democratic parties that dominate US politics, founding members say. The leaders cited a Gallup poll last year showing a record two thirds of Americans believe a third party is needed. Now, I want to be clear in my analysis or what I mean by my analysis in this story, okay? This is not an indictment of third parties, okay? This is an indictment of this particular effort. And I'll explain why in just a moment. No, I'll explain why right now, I can't help myself. Their analysis of what is currently transpiring among the electorate is incorrect. They have inaccurately identified a need for centrism when in reality centrism has really gone against everything that American voters have been asking for from their elected lawmakers. And I'll get to those specifics in just a moment. Now, the merger involves the Renew America movement formed in 2021 by dozens of former officials in the Republican administrations of Ronald Reagan, mm. George H.W. Bush, great. George W. Bush, awesome, and Donald Trump. I mean, do I need to even say any more, guys? Like, really? Do I really need to say any more? Did you uh, did you read their uh, Washington Post op-ed? Because it yes. said nothing about that. It said nothing. No, no. It said absolutely nothing in it because they were saying they drew all these false equivalences. The uh, abortion debate. There's the extremists on the left who want there to be late-term abortions, which is not what the left thinks. I mean, yes. just just go the just go the full Republican talking point and say. Oh, they want to kill babies right after they're born. I mean, no, no, that no. It, like they they that is such, such a straw man. No, uh, late term abortions are sometimes necessary for the life of the mother, but that is not an something that uh, anyone on the left, and we're pretty far on the left, is advocating for. So it's no, just Emma. straw man after straw man after straw man. Yeah, I, I gotta I gotta get to it since you mentioned it. I'm gonna skip ahead and get to that because the Washington Post opinion piece that they published on this really tells you everything you need to know about whether this third party is going to represent the interests of progressive voters. It will not, and there are plenty of straw mans represented in this piece. It's titled, most third parties have failed, here's why ours won't. And then they proceed to demonstrate how little they understand about the needs of American voters. So they write, political extremism is ripping our nation apart. And the two major parties have failed to remedy the crisis. If nothing is done, the United States will not reach its 300th birthday this century in recognizable form. That's why we are coming together, Democrats, Republicans, and independents. <laughs> <laughs> to build a new unifying political party for the majority of Americans who want to move past divisiveness and reject extremism. This is just the Problem Solvers Caucus, which is a bipartisan caucus of pro corporate lawmakers in a completely different political party that will go nowhere. Now, what do they cite? They cite as their own positions, basically, Stuff that sounds like what a normal conservative Democrat would say or what a normal conservative Republican would say. For instance, they write on guns, on guns, most Americans don't agree with calls from the far left to confiscate all guns and repeal the Second Amendment, but they're also rightfully worried by the far right's <laughs> insistence on eliminating gun laws. Okay. Um, what? I don't know, I, I, I genuinely, I'm not making this up. I genuinely don't know of a significant group of leftists. And when I say significant, I mean a big group of leftists. Like it is not a shared leftist ideology to confiscate guns and repeal the second amendment. In fact, it's, it's interesting, um, I am seeing more and more leftist 
calling for arming themselves in response to the endless threats from right wingers who like just open and will openly and willy nilly say that they want to slaughter us. But I haven't really seen like this movement within the left to do away with guns in America. That's laughable. So yeah, that's part of the straw man that you're referring to, Emma. Um, I also want to go to this climate change argument that they make in their piece. They say, on climate change, most Americans don't agree with calls from the far left to completely upend our economy and, and way of life. But they also reject the far right's denial that there is even a problem. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, Emma, the left would actually like to do the opposite of upending our economy. I mean, the goal initially uh, during the Biden administration was to shift investment and focus into renewable energy both for the both for you know the environment of course but it would do what it would create new jobs you know like and the initial idea was to create unionized well paying jobs within the renewable energy sector but of course those in congress who are heavily funded by the fossil fuel industry defeated that effort to the detriment of workers to the detriment of our economy to the detriment of doing something about climate change yeah yang is such a clown i mean honestly he's it's and I know that it's not just him here, but he's the Democrat representing this very, very serious forward party. It, it's such confusing marketing too. If you guys are the centrist, aren't you the inertia party? Like, or I mean, what? Aren't you the status quo? Aren't you the stillness party? You're not supposed to be moving in any direction if you're the center, because that's the reality of centrist politics. Centrists like to cloak themselves in some artificial superiority. Mm, we are the respectable ones. We are the, the standard between the far left and the far right. And we'll mischaracterize what the left actually uh, uh, represents because then our argument's a little more shaky because most of what the left wants to advocate for is common sense. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why leftists are historically always proven right. And that's why usually, in the end, even though the, due to the work of activists, the left is able to win in certain areas, even though, hey, that's more on social issues and when capital gets in the way, that's a, such a massive mountain to climb, but I digress. Um, they have to misrepresent what the left stands for in order to make themselves sound reasonable. And, and, and that is what just stands out to me there. It really is indistinguishable from, I don't know, say Mark Warner or Joe mm -hmm. Manchin or Kirsten Cinema. Dude, you already have a home in the Democratic Party, if that's the case. You're a neoliberal centrist. You're what you're Josh Gottheimer. I mean, like the idea that there is not adequate representation for this perspective is laughable because the president himself represents this perspective. And so we need a lot less of this and we need more of actually standing for something because as I just said, Cloaking yourself in superiority because you are standing in the in between two different perspectives. I actually respect you a lot less because that means that you don't have the gumption or the intellectual curiosity to look into the issues yourself, and you are too insecure about your own intellectual fortitude to look at issues on a case by case basis and stand for a movement in and of itself. In fact, all you do is just fence it. And that is kind of embarrassing and not something that people want to support. The only time we saw significant structural changes in America and real social spending programs that both put Americans to work with good paying jobs and provided Americans with the income that they need and the social spending programs that they need as a social safety net was when we had strong organized labor which of course was a huge component and made a huge impact in regard to Roosevelt's policies like the New Deal. You know, and so when we talk about what the solutions are, you know, I've been open about how disillusioned and discouraged I've been with electoral politics and there's a reason for that. If you focus all your energy on electoral politics without building people power outside of our system of government, 
Well, we're always gonna run into these dead ends. It's gonna happen over and over and over again. And as I've said before, the one thing that's given me a little bit of hope in this country is what we've been seeing with labor organizing. Um, you know, there have been more and more stories of Starbucks stores, for instance, uh, voting to unionize. Uh, there was a, a Trader Joe's store uh, today that uh, announced that they had voted in favor of unionizing as well. These are small victories in the eyes of you know people who might not be working for these particular companies. But these small victories really do add up because you need organized labor to apply pressure to these politicians to compete with these corporate interests. Otherwise, we have no leverage, we have no power. That's where we stand today. And I think that's why a lot of the energy has been focused on electoral politics because we don't really have any power outside of that. And we barely have any power when it comes to electoral politics in the first place, especially with how this system is set up. So if you think the only solution is a third party, I'm just worried that you're gonna be disappointed over and over again. Um, and certainly when it comes to this particular third party, I mean, they're just, they published a piece on it in the Washington Post, just letting you know, they're making it very clear, we will disappoint you. <laughs> in fact, final thing, let's go to graphic 11 here. What do Americans want? What do the majority of Americans want? According to this poll, it was covered by CNBC, 84% want paid maternity leave, 75% want government funding for childcare, 60% want boosting the minimum wage, 57% want tuition free state and public college, 54% want Medicare for all. Other polls, by the way, have an even higher number in the 70s. And 28%, oh wow, just 28%. Say they want universal basic income, which of course was the policy that Andrew Yang championed during the presidential election. And look, it's because I think most Americans want to feel like they have purpose, right? So I have nothing against universal basic income, but I don't think that it's the end all be all. People want a sense of purpose. People want to feel like they're contributing to society, but they also want to feel that they're getting something in return from their government when they're a productive members of society, right? And or when they fall on hard times, they want to know that they have a safety net to catch them when they fall. This is common sense. It's common sense. People want to make sure that they're whole, that they have the basic necessities you know, necessary to live a happy, healthy life, to raise happy, healthy children. And the idea that we need more centrism instead in lieu of all those policies is just ridiculous. It really is. Yeah, and, and universal basic income just really quickly, that would be fine as a supplement. The, yeah. What Andrew Yang was proposing was as a replacement for all of our other social safety net. And that is a reallocating of government money that we have paid into that goes into people's pockets that then they spend <gasps> likely in the private sector. And so mm -hmm. that's why uh, Andrew Yang was in favor of it. And so fine, want UBI, but we also want Medicare for all. We want to expand social security. We want to expand um, uh, the social safety net in general. So. It, as a supplement, it's fine, but not as a replacement, no way. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges, you've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.